Top great speaker, outstanding speaker. They will be sharing with us different type of safety <coughs> aspect. There is a presentation about uh, safety cultures, security cultures, children's safety, consultation, and so on. So I guarantee you will have a benefit that will be leveraged to even to your family and to your daily life. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you for our guest from the government sector, also from the cake companies. Thank you very much for joining us in the safety fusion. Talking right now, we have also live stream. We are shooting through the YouTube for our member of Loyi will be watching us live. Um, I will move now to the safety moment. As an equal culture, we encourage and we always conduct a safety moment before any event, gathering, and meetings. And I encourage you to do to maintain it and introduce introduce it to your cultures. So today I'm going to go over the emergency response in our buildings, evacuation response. So in case of alarm, so I hope we don't end up with such cases. So basically, during the emergency, we have two emergency exits, one in the right, one in the left. You can utilize them. You just exit from the door all the way to the emergency exit, to the staircase, all the way to the, yeah, all, all the, way to the ground levels. In the ground levels, it's our assembly point. It is located in the front of the main entrance, the VIP entrance. So once you assemble there, we have the department warden, will be taking your headcount and report any uncertainties. So saying that, I want to appreciate my colleague Mohammed Dubaya, who did this creative week. So thank you, Mohammed Dubaya. So before going any further, I would like to introduce uh, our president and CEO, Dr. Ramesh. So please welcome Dr. Ramesh for the opening speech. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi It's uh, truly a pleasure to welcome all of you here, notably the uh, people from uh, the government and the various companies, because uh, this meeting is primarily for us to learn by sharing experiences. So when it comes to safety, uh, obviously, each of us bring a level of expertise to that as uh, members of running a large petrochemical facility in Kuwait, it's uh, extraordinarily important for us to run a safe operation. But we are not uh, the experts of safety. I think uh, you know the members from the fire department, from the uh, Kuwait security department, from uh, all the various areas of the Kuwait government agencies, we hope we can share our experiences and, and learn from all of you. As somebody who has worked in about uh, seven different locations across the world when it comes to safety, if you asked me today what uh, we worry about most at the leadership level when it comes to safety is two main areas. Because everybody acknowledges that safety is important, we say all the right things, meetings like this are very well attended, but we still continue to have fatalities, we have unsafe incidents, and uh, we are trying to find out is there anything common that is happening across the world because of which we continue to have unsafe incidents. And there are two topics that have risen to the top, at least as far as some of the other, uh, you know, in, in the manufacturing world, and obviously we need to learn from the security world what they see. 
One area from a cultural standpoint that we find is happening in the world and we don't know why is the speed at which people are getting upset is unbelievable today. Like if somebody cuts you off when you're driving or if somebody says something that offends you or they insult you or they insult a family member, the level at which a person gets angry and feels a need to respond violently is unbelievable. I mean, uh, people physically abuse because you have touched a, a, very, a very sensitive point. Or if you cut somebody off, or even if you get upset and you honk them, people take the time to lower the window and stick their hand out and you know make an obscene gesture, or then they pull up next to you and they are. It's amazing how quickly people are getting extremely upset. And that pretty much starts the whole process of an unsafe, uh, hostile reaction. This seems to be true whether whichever area you're in, yeah, it's true in management, it's true in offices, it is true with, uh, at the working level, and it is true at the political level. And people blame social media, people blame children. We are seeing this in schools where children are hitting one another because a child gets upset. Something has to be done where we are obviously going to get upset. We are all citizens of the world. We need to see how to temper the pace of emotion. That is one area that you know I would like to see if we can learn something from the experts here. How not immediately shoot somebody because uh, you know they said something that is offensive. The second area that we worry about is that in routine tasks, you start getting complacent because you're doing it every day. In fact, the example we use in uh, schools and in some of the petrochemical plants these days in, across the world, because that is our area of expertise, is something as simple as cutting vegetables, or uh, how to use a knife, or how to open a can. People have forgotten that a sharp instrument always has to move away from you when you're using it. The number of people I see, including whether it's a housewife, whether it is a maid, whether it is, uh, you know, people in, involved in routine tasks, they do the most unsafe task because they're always used to doing it and because that is the way it has always worked. And that has resulted in a lot of unsafe incidents. So bottom line, when it comes to safety, there is no, uh, sometimes you don't get a second chance because to go from an unsafe area to a fatality, it doesn't take much. And in the unlikely event, unfortunately, those of us who have served in this industry have seen that once, God forbid, you experience a fatality where somebody loses their life, that experience stays with you throughout your life. And we have to constantly remind ourselves to do everything possible that something this tragic doesn't occur as we you know, lead our day-to-day -day lives. So with that, thank you again for coming. It is a very important meeting for us to sponsor. And we are primarily here to learn from all of you. So please share your experiences with us so that at the end of the day, we are all safer producers and safer citizens of this world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh, for the remark. So now we'll start the presentation with the first uh, presenter is uh, Dr. Mohammed al Raihani. He's a senior consultant in EHS safety. So the subject is very interesting, no more safety. Uh, Dr. Mohammed has really great experience and background about safety, and today he will show us how safety is important and needs to be embedded in every step in our life. So please, Dr. Mohammed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will change your mind. I hope that you will share with me this, this event exactly because we are not looking for only safety. I want to change this mentality. There is no more safety. We don't have safety. If somebody asks me why is there no more safety, anybody comes so near, if I just take somebody and say that you are safety now. So that means it's only safety. We just care about uh, the others in the field on the office, that's 
I'm an HSC man or a QHSC man. Give him more responsibilities. Let's see feel that he is more important than his job. And if you do have a mistake, you sue him. You give him a money, you give him control, you give him everything just to care about safety. If something else happens, you say, it's not my responsibility. I'm a safety man. No money. You are responsible about the QHSC, quality, health, and environmental. That is your job. But if he's outside, I mean, that's in our country. You can't sue me. If anything's happening, you say that you're paying me because I'm a safety man. You're not paying me because I'm a QHSC man. Am I right? You have a deal on this? Yeah. So, now we're going to the deeper little bit to know exactly why we are have such a last time when I make a survey, when I'm coming from the UK here, I make a survey because I've been ex-QOC man before as a consultant, and I covered many things before that, before maybe 20 years. And I found a lot of accidents and incidents in this country, titles, people have been just out of the war because they cannot do anything. Because of what? Because why you? Because we call that, he's a safety man. He's a safety man, only. So what about the environmental? It's not my show. That's you, just put me a safety man. And everybody looking for the safety man. Outside of the country now, if you said I'm a safety man, you say, no, no, I don't need a safety man. I need somebody to have HSC. You know about health, safety, and environmental. I need this guy. You, have, you, know, you can help me in this one? I need you. If you don't, please leave me alone. Now that's the utility outside of all the global companies and all the key companies outside. So, regardless of what exactly happened about the facts, let me just open a new mind about how we just run a new QHS in this country. QHS is not QPC. <coughs> You just see that's being quality in the work. I need expertise that are quality. I need materials that must be quality. I need to help people know about the health. There are expertise in the health. So there are quality. I need a material in this health. You must, this material must be quality. I need a momentum. This momentum must be area, but I need a, a quality momentum. I need the people who know about this, it must be called, you know about the environmental. So I must choose now a quality man, a quality expertise in HSC to run my job. So one is enough to run others, many managers, many officers. So one QHSC, you can run many companies. If we go through this channel. Now if you go, for example, this we do for this one. This is our life. Our life is going with this one. We're going, leaving our home to work. So that's mean we have family in the home. This family waiting for us to come back again. We must give this lecture before we go to the work, if I am an interesting man, to my family. To my drivers, to my servants, to my wife, to my children, every Friday together we have like as acquaintances, we have everything you complete all the family together. We sit in together, hey, today I learned something, I want you to reach it. Maybe I will be outside and the fire is happening at home. You don't need to call immediately. Do the first what you I give it to you. How to use that fire service. If somebody's being wounded, how to just make the first aid for them. So give this letter first to your family. If you are comfortable in the family, you can go to the work, you are comfortable. You know that. This little also you give it to your family. So you can do your job comfortable. All right? You will be on this one? So I'm going now to the work. In the work, also, don't tell that I'm a manager, it's a, it's a job of the city man. No. Now, from the up to down, you must know about the future. He's responsible. All of us are responsible for HSC. All, not just only HSC man. Sometimes you are working in the field and there is no HSC man, but you are responsible as an engineer or the field manager or something. If you don't know your job, so you have a lot of fights. A lot of acceptance. Because you are, you said about yourself that I'm only a manager. I'm only a field man. It's not my job. No more. 
know more about this stock. Everybody must know about HSE. Everybody must learn HSE. If you want to be the promoter more, we get you HSE. Everybody must know from the T boy to the manager, he must understand how he deal with any situation. If he's in the office, if he's in the home, if he's in the field, if he's in the road, so he must know how to deal with this one. We in Walsall make a lot of plans on this one. And we can promote this one very easy and smooth. Very smooth. So, in this area, I choose some subjects with two sides. This side, how to bring up our HSC to our home first, to our children, to our family, each one, each one by own, with my wife, with my children, with my mates, with the drivers. When they are okay, they understand me, so I will go to my, my job, finish. I go to my office. <coughs> Every week, I can make a meeting just for HSC, first for myself, uh, there is a say in Queen, he said that if I'm a manager and I don't know to lead my group, so how I can reach my, to my police? First of all, I want to train myself. I train myself, I understand the job, and I give it to others. After this, I will be unique. That means if somebody can come to me, I don't need to, the HEC man to come to me. No, I am a manager, I know my job. So if you do something, I can't sue them. That is the way now how to run with it. So the HEC is a, a life. It's your life. From head to foot, it's your life. Your life, you're dealing with HEC. You wake up for morning, you must use your HEC. How to use it in the home. When you go to the bathroom, or so when you go to, to take a shower, how to use it a slippery something, something, all this is your job. How to show others if there's a fire in the kitchen. The maid, you don't need a maid, he's coming to work. If you don't teach him, he will burn all the home. All right? So, so with my first lecture and my first uh, trains must be in the home. Starting from the home. That's my own home. After this, I will bring it to the, to the office. And I go to the field by myself as a manager, as a senior manager. I go to the field. I see my eyes, I, I just leave the HSC people. I just tell, tell them what I know. That is now a new project to start to do it. I don't have enough time for this very much. Another section of my job, exactly, this is a new system, a very new system now in the world. You see that, a rich info with a list paper. All of us, when we make an accident, there is a lot of sits. A lot of sits you must do for your few man or for your manager. He must take all papers to see, and after that maybe he warn you. He said, I will leave it for them. And they will make a deal and will make a lot of problem for our work. A lot of problem. Now there is a new system. We used it before in BDS, behavior-based safety. Behavior-based safety little bit warning, but we just modify it with the a QHSC, BDC, and we just put it together, BDS, it became a checklist. A checklist, you can use it for many kinds of operations. Investigation, investing, equaling, auditing, training, all operations what you can, in all key companies. You can put one checklist, and we put it as a soft copy in the computer, one guy, with many columns down, you can put your info in this checklist, and you add little two papers behind it. All the key manager from the head to feet, he knows what's happening today in the field. With one checklist. Only one checklist. You put the info, you feed it. You bring the checklist, you see everything due to the global structures. OSHA, DuPont, Mibosh. This rules, just put your rules and go for it. Put it in your computer, in your software, and send it for your manager. Your manager will write his things down from and send it to another manager. And the same day, this checklist is your evidence that you know what's happening in your field. That's exactly what's happening in your office. That's happening what's happening in your 
or so you can use it in the home. You want to go to home and you want to know, don't forget what you want to do to your family. You make a checklist and put your answers, questions, go to the home and sit with your family. And this checklist will be your background makeup. Very easy and comfortable. That is a new system which is running now in the world. I just bring it now to my own country. As I've been in this before and I live outside and I do a lot of research, maybe more than 18 years research, and I want to raise these things. And I'm sure that system can be your life. Easy. You don't need, if you have somebody or some problems in the field, to go for it. He can just sit with you. You can see it, put your opinions, send to the others. And, and so, and so, and so, you feel that. You are in the field, you are in the office, you are in the home. By this kind of checklist. You feed the checklist, and you answer it, and send it to others. There is two questions. I'm not answering this question. I want you people to answer it and send it back to me through Mr. Sultan. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry to take your time. Sorry to take your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohammed. Indeed, rich info, less paperwork, I totally agree. And I'm sure that you have really rich information that you can even deliver, but we do short this. So we have the next speaker from Kuwait Fire Service Directorate, uh, Warrant Officer uh, Ali Dabar. Ali Dabar, he developed really a wonderful <coughs> book. So today you will hear a story. So I will kick it to Ali to please welcome the stage for the presentation. Good day to you all. I'm Warrant Officer Ali Dabak. I work at Mubarak Kabir Fire Station and has no team. In 2015, we responded to a fire incident in Al Jabal Jab Ali area. A house was burning and five years old Rashid was missing. We split into two teams, fire team and rescue team. After searching for Rashid for more than one hour, we found him dead in his parents' bedroom. We couldn't recognize him because we couldn't tell him apart from the burning furniture. And mostly because he was hiding under the bed. The investigation showed that he played with a tissue box and his father's lighter. And he tried to hide the burning box in the closet. They say that he died from suffocation, but the real cause was ignorance. All of us somehow were involved, because a child must know what to do in case of fire and how to escape. But he didn't. It's our responsibility as a community to create awareness about surviving skills for children. For me, I had a counseling center for children and adults for nine years. And after dealing with children for that role, I wrote Junior Firefighter. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to Rashid. In this story, Rashid lives to guide other children to safety. As you can see, we try to make it easy for children so they can understand the picture more than the word. 
mostly the world will be for the parents who read for the children. Rashid, as a kid, wants to play with his sister, Sheikha. They don't use water, they don't want to waste water, and this is some of the hidden messages that we want to give for children. Rashid just got a firefighter uniform for children. His mom is doing some size rearrangement for him. It's all what a child would think of. We as adults won't, won't think about this at all, even maybe when we buy something for our children, even if it's a toy. Rashid is dreaming of being a firefighter. As you can see, he is not using the real fire extinguisher that we use. He is using the hose from the playground. So that means, and he's not even imagining himself as a grown-up guy, he's just imagining himself as a kid. I actually put the, fa the family picture under the smoke detector. So, uh, as one of the hidden messages, <coughs> that the smoke detector would, would protect the family. The story I just told you about, it's a real story. It happened to us, it happened to me. My colleagues are more there also, and they answered it. Uh, if they had fire detector, smoke detector, this wouldn't happen to us. He would be here with us today. And that's why I put the family picture under the smoke detector. So the child should know what to do in case of fire. Usually child would, child would hide, like Rashid. Uh, as you can see, he's recalling what the firefighter said when he visited them at school. I don't want children to do whatever they want. I want them actually to think about what the adult told them before. I don't want them to have a new idea or even try to think. <coughs> First of all, we need to alert everyone about the fire. Second of all, if you can see the escaping plan, it's not actually, we're not gonna go back home and draw some escaping plan for our children, but I want them to understand that there is exit in the house, because in case of fear, they won't think of anything else. Third of all, running. We need nothing from children. We don't want them to, to put out the fire at all. It would be a risky thing, even if it's a small fire. They just need to run away. As you cannot notice, Rashid is barefoot. And I'll come to this at the end of the story. Running away and never hiding. You know, having a counseling center, I saw a lot of cases. Children are scared from their parents. And I'm sure in the real life with, with Rashid's story, he was scared from his father. I was there when his father got the news. He was scared, that's why he was hit. If, Rash, if Rashid's parents were more friendly, maybe he would be alive. Because fear, sometimes could be our enemy. We need to leave fear for our safety. Rashid is outside, he's still barefoot. If you can notice, and my colleague firefighter can notice also, the black smoke, that means the start of the fire. It's starting. The, fire, the father is putting out the fire, and now it's white. It means that it's done. But what Rashid is doing is calling 112. And I'm sure a lot of people here didn't know what 112 means. Maybe some of, some of you are just recalling 777, I guess. So Rashid, as five or six years old, was calling 112 and giving them the address. Because he can, because it's easy. Memorizing an address for a, ch for a child is very easy. And that's what children should do. And he's always referring for a firefighter visit at his school. And if you can see, the windows were closed, but when the firefighters arrived, arrived they were open because of the smoke. So the firefighter didn't do anything, actually. 
His father put out the fire. The fire detector alert the house and rush it called 112. So we were talking about the cause of fire and again Rashid is still barefoot which indicates danger. It's still there. As you can see in the end, he's wearing his shoe. It means all's good. We're done with the fire. We're done with the lesson to give to the child. I don't want a five years old or six years old to think about his toy or his shoe also. We just want him to run to escape. So there was a ceremony in the story for the five years old Rashid for what he did because actually this is a message you need to deliver to your children, to the community somehow, that children should know about this. It's our responsibility. <coughs> we have an empty page so the child can draw the escaping plan so he can know the exit. Then we have three questions. First one, what to do in case of fire, which is in the story. Second one, what is the number of the emergency, 112. The third one, four types of extinguishers. Is it in the story? No. no, it's not. Can anyone tell me why? Yes, exactly. All the answers are true. We don't need a child to actually put out the fire. But what I want you to know that child could be dreaming. So reading the story, they could be their own Batman or Superman. They have their own hero. So what I want them to do, I want them to ask their parents. I don't want them to rely on themselves. So the last question is not in the story. And I had this actually. A lot of parents came to me about the last question. It's not in the story. Easily, you can Google it. But I want the kid to rely on his parents too. Because after all, it's just a kid. Oh, I stole some. Okay, so we're, we're done here. Um, sorry for taking this time to explain the story. Uh, just in the end, I wanted to thank Equip for helping Rashi to spare awareness and guide children to safety. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Mohammed Shimari. I want to say, uh, thank Mr. Uh, uh, Abdul Qadir Gabundi, Mr. Rabba uh, Sultan. They were actually, the book just printed was yesterday. We rushed doing this. It was. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Abdullah Ali. It's really an unfortunate incident, but really nice story, word to letter to our families and to our kids. So thank you very much again. Uh, and by the way, by the end of this session, every person will have a copy of the book. Uh, trending habits for the computer safety. We have engineer Nasser on the staff. Uh, engineer Nasser, he will go over very interesting information and some topics tips, things that how you're going to protect your network, your mobiles, your phone, from hacking or from any threat. So, Dr. Nasser, uh, Engineer Nasser, please, you can come. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Iqbal, for the opportunity. I'm um, so happy to see you here, and hopefully that you can find this lecture of cybersecurity beneficial and so enjoyable. So let's start. Uh, we're talking about computer safety as a habit. So because you know we know that we are the ones who are controlling the computers. So it's a matter of habit. It starts with us and it ends with us. So let's get started. My name is Nasser al -Ustad. I'm a computer engineer, I'm a lecturer, and also I work for a Kuwait hackers company. And uh, we basically do training, lecturing in cybersecurity, and also we are developing tools for cybersecurity. And I'm also, a pent uh, I'm also do penetration testing tools. I develop them myself, and I teach people to develop in the Python uh, programming language, which is widely used. Now, we know that everything <coughs> is imperfect, no matter how much 
time we spend on it, right? No matter how much effort we put in it. So why are they there? So what is vulnerable? What do we have as vulnerable? We have everything as vulnerable, starting with computers. Since we're talking about computers here, this is our context here, right? So since everything is going computerized, every sector, especially in this corporate, is going, is going, uh, is going computerized, so every sector is involved. So we can see that operating systems, software, hardware are vulnerable. So that's, that's something that we need to pay, to, to pay, uh, to pay attention for. What others? What other thing that any other as, uh, any other assets? Talking about cars, valves, uh, reservoirs, everything, especially which is related. Even if they are, they are not computerized, they can be vulnerable. Even the magnetic doors. But what's more interesting and most important of all is this: us humans. We are imperfect by design, and we are considered as the weakest link in every system exists. Because we are the ones who are operating the machines, even if they were auto automated, right? Right. Okay. Now, we're talking about vulnerabilities. What are vulnerabilities? Vulnerabilities are like bugs or any hole in the wall in any system exist. Why they are why are they, why are they always exist? Because you know, every time, let's say let's take Windows operating system. The people at Microsoft are trying to develop it and patch it. The more they patch, the more the more holes uh, the more the more holes exist. You know, sometimes some functionality is being fixed can conflict others, right? It's only by just giving them time. Just giving them time, even if they were uh, even if they were fully packed, hackers will have more time and energy to to devote to this task to break this system down. It's only a matter of time. Nothing is perfect, and that's a fact that we have to live with, right? Yeah. Now, <coughs> operating systems. I'm talking about operating system vulnerabilities. Why do they exist? Why do they exist? Come on. Basically, yeah. Basically, you know, the, the simplest answer, you know, because the system is out of date. So I have seen and worked with companies who are not willing to pay for a single update because you know this, this system is working properly. But unfortunately, the bad news is you don't know what's happening under the hood. Maybe someone is getting in and out without you even noticing it, right? And sometimes there's something, there's a flaw of design, a flaw of programming by the manufacturers themselves that they, you know, that they're ashamed to even say about, it, say something about it. And yeah, since it's Windows. It's the most popular operating system in the world. It's widely used, so everybody hates it. Why everybody hates it? Because basically it's not free. Hackers hate that, right? Yeah. So it's not free, and it has its own limitations. If you want some, something extra, you have to pay for it. So it's widely used, so this is, this is why hackers are, developing, are devoting their time and effort to have this operating system no matter what updates it has. Because when you hack one copy of it, you can hack billions or even billions, right? Now, is Windows only infected? No. We're talking about Linux operating system. The Linux operating system is an operating system that you can download for free. It's free and open source. And open source means First of all, it's free. You can take it, do whatever you want to do with it, and you can even resell it with your own updates and get money out of it. But the, thing, the good thing and is the bad thing about it, that it's community maintained. So basically, when you have one team working in some functionality, we're using their own protocols, another team will do the same, you're working, we're working with their own protocols, and this can make conflicts between the functionality of the operating system. What else? Since it's free and open source, there is no insurance policy will cover your loss if you're using this kind of software for your corporate. We're talking here about an enterprise level. I know it might be stable, it might be beneficial, it will save you a lot of money, but there's no insurance policy will cover an open source license. 
because everyone who uses it is using it in their own risk. Moving on, talking about something called zero days. Anyone aware of this term, zero days? Okay, zero day is a vulnerability that exists in a software which hackers use and develop software to take an exploit of that hole and that wall. But the thing is that nobody knows about it and nobody has declared it yet. And why is that? So that hackers can harvest out of it, right? Yeah. So they are called zero days, sorry, they are called zero days because the companies, the companies who are manufacturing the software itself, the effect of software itself, have exactly zero day to maintain it. That's dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously. Now let's take some, case, some cases. Windows. Back in 2013, or maybe before that, they, the, some cybersecurity researcher have declared that they, there exists a zero day which is over 10 years old and nobody has discovered it, officially. But you can imagine hackers who are harvesting from this for years without us knowing. That's very dangerous, right? Moving on to Java. Everybody knows Java. Java is a programming language widely used. It works cross-platform, meaning it works on mobiles. It works on all operating system. If a hacker in one of the distributions that was, you know, a few years back, not so long, if a hacker knows that his target is running Java. He can, he can easily execute remote code into the target machine, meaning it's a backdoor. He owns the computer, whether it's, an, uh, whether it's uh, a single computer or a server or a series of servers through a network. But what's the most dangerous case is nuclear factories. Nuclear factories between, there's a case in Iran that, uh, that, exist, that existed between 2013 and 2015. One nuclear reactor has almost exploded, literally, ladies and gentlemen, because he, uh, you know, the, uh, it was infected by something called Stuxnet, or something similar to it. Basically, it's a malware that infected nuclear reactors. What it did is the following. It only did one thing, which is giving, yes, which is giving faulty, faulty readings about pressure gauges. It shows everything is fine, but in real life, no. We almost had a catastrophe, ladies and gentlemen, with a blink in a eye, but thank God it was contained. Moving on, as individuals, any kind of individual in any position, we're working in our daily job, what can we do? First of all, we have to make sure that our software is reliable. It's not cracked, even if it was free, if, even if somebody was giving it to you just to test it. Is it reliable or not? Moving on. Permissions given to users. Until this very day, I have seen companies, even corporates, who have some of their, some of their workers laid out or maybe you know, transferred into other locations, but they have privileges to to services and even active directories and even emails, even if they were laid out. You know, that's, that's something that we need to, to reconsider. Because you cannot give privileges to people who are not using it for the right place and the right job. Right? Choose the right antivirus and firewalls, especially the ones that, you, that are using AI. What's going on here, you know, a smart antivirus, it will use its artificial intelligence not just to go through the software, the softwares that you have, that you have installed in your, uh, on an operating system, but it goes through the behavior. For example, one interesting case that uh, one of the smart antiviruses that uses AI found that one of the processes of Windows Notepad, which is only a notepad that can just take notes with it, it found that Notepad was trying to connect to another IP address out of the country. This is not supposed to be happened by design, even, right? So it went, uh, you know, just locked it and you know, limited, uh, you know, 
limited the access of, to the internet and stop it from, from home working. So this kind of intelligence is the thing that you really need to protect yourself. Check the active services. If you have servers for testing, you cannot put uh, you know, a database or, uh, SSH, uh, or SSH or, uh, SSH or, tel uh, or Telnet to, to, use it for, uh, uh, I mean, to use it for testing because you know, this database may contain sensitive data about the company. If you don't want these services to be worked or accessed at, do not even keep them as a luxury. This can be fatal. Just get rid of them. Now, speaking of Microsoft Windows, you know, since all, uh, everybody was, everybody's using Windows, what are the most known vulnerabilities of it? First of all, macro files. Macro files are scripting language that produces, uh, produce, uh, that produces uh, uh, automation file, automation files, so that you know it automates it, automates you know your Windows, your, uh, your Windows or Microsoft workflows. So, I'm sorry, Microsoft uh, work, work, workflows. So since it's scriptable or programmable, hackers used and still are using these uh, these files to build malware with it. Moving on, infected Microsoft Word files. You know, using the technique of steganography, hackers can hide uh, malware inside any kind of file. So basically the victim just clicks on the word file that he sees and you know, it will work. But what happens in the background is something that you cannot see, which is a backdoor maybe or a virus or even a worm that spreads through, through the network. Appearance deception. You know, we all know that in Windows you can change the icon of your own scripts, files, folders into anything else. So the hacker, you know, and all what he has to do is to change the look of his own malware to be like a Microsoft Word. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, last case I have seen of these was yesterday. Was yesterday. Now, let's go deeper inside the Word file. The Word file is all about, it's, it's nothing more than an archive that contains XML files. XML files are like basically are, are uh, you know basically are web based, and uh, they use web technology which is, can be altered and modified easily. Now, we have until now we have known how to hack machines. What about hacking men? What about hacking the man behind the machine? This is the technique of social engineering, which is one of my own specialities. Social engineering basically is putting your victims in their condition or a direction to do what you want to do, either they like it or not. And they always exist when your system is fully patched. Hackers, when they find that the system is fully patched, they don't want to make, waste more time, more time. All what they have to do is to study the man behind the machine. And as we know, as humans, we are vulnerable by nature. Just start a connection, emotional, or any, or any bridge of interest, and the social engineer will, quick, will make the victim has, no matter what. Okay, what do they use, social engineers? They use many mental techniques. We're talking about blackmailing, we're talking about emotional stress, NLP, but one of my own specialities is conversational hypnosis. Yes, I'm certified, and I'm using conversational hypnosis daily in the context of cybersecurity, and it works, here in Kuwait even. Speaking of open source intelligence, open source intelligence, you know, hackers are using these kind of techniques to, these kind of techniques to study their targets, not by just hacking them. All what they have to do is to go to, through uh, social media or even breach data, and they can see what are you posting about yourself, who are you following, what are you doing with your life, and they can profile the victim, and then they will know how to attack. They all, you know, the, you know, social engineering always works, always works when done correctly. So, in the real world, what happens? What in the real world, what happens is people with social skills, which they don't necessarily need any computers, working with technical uh, with, uh, with persons with high technical skills. This is the power mix. I have seen people who know both of these worlds. That's like an unstoppable bullet. 
But there's a question here. Is there any framework that is available for everybody that hackers or even professional testers that use to do such? Yes. It is called SE Toolkit, Social Engineering Toolkit. It's an open source tool available and developed by Trusted Sec, and it's there for legal purposes only. But you know, hackers, they can do whatever they want to do, even if it's not legal. Now, let's see this guy, David, and how he will use his own sort of talent to know everything about everybody. Responsibility to protect our data from, pre from being breathed and being protected. So, what can we take home with us? First of all, let's keep our systems out always up to date. It's always worth the extra buck. <coughs> and always, always, always buy your merchandise and your products from people that you can sue. Right? It's self explanatory, right? Uh -huh. Now, moving on. Keep your, staff keep your staff trained. So, I mean, sessions of awareness just like this one are, are valuable. Are, you, know, are, you, cannot, you cannot put a value tag on it because every piece of information that can save not just a job or a corporate, even lives, literally. Keep your human wall patched. You know, people hire people like me just to do penetration testing for their networks. But that's not enough. Penetrate, test your human wall. The wall, I mean, we're talking about the human op humans operating the machines. Keep them up to date. Are they aware of social attacks or not? Let's enforce the high, I mean, let's enforce the culture of social engineering attacks. You know, your people don't have to be professionals, right? But at least put them in the track where they can detect a social attack or a social engineer when it appears. Last but not least, please, CEOs, C levels, everyone, even stakeholders, get involved. Get involved because every and each one of you can be a potential door to this conference. 
Finally, I thank you very much for your time, and I'm so sorry if I took a lot of your time, and my colleagues' time as well, and I'll be more than delighted to be at your service through my handle in Twitter and, uh, and uh, email. You can take a picture of this one here. Yes. Also, we at Wall SOS are available for live consultation through their platform. We are, you know, personally I am available for cybersecurity consultation and also Python development, developing, uh, to, uh, developing project is based. So, so uh, I'm so happy to see you here and thank you very much for your, uh, for your time. My time is here is done. My name is Nasser. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Nasser. Very really good presentation and very interesting how the hackers go to the people just to hack their behavior. So we have the next presentation that's related about security, which is security cultures. It's by Mr. Yasser Asad. Yasser Asad has really great information about security and really good background for the security. That will, he will cover and show us some more knowledge. Mr. Yasser, please. security culture and security uh, behavior. Uh, I'm going to delete my snaps and stick around today and everything. Anyway, my name is Yasser Lassid. Thing we're going to talk about can we really change our security culture or our security behavior? Uh, we have some terminology we use daily when we say sabah al khair, back al khair, good morning. Uh, it, it keeps us really close to the security personnel. Uh, sometimes People, they use this terminology or the way to say hi to get closer to the security personnel itself. Uh, but those things or those terminology will make us weak. Why? I'll show you later on. First of all, what is security? Security is to protect the facilities, assets, including people and property. And when I say terminology, sabah al khair, masak al khair, sabah al khair, ibash, or swalif, the insider threat. No one in our entities thought about the insider threat. We always put barrier for outsider, for the unlawful interference. What about the employees themselves? I'm not saying we have insiders now, but did Daesh announce that on the 25th of Feb we're going to start uh, doing some uh, threats? No. Let's think about one thing. When did they establish? Is it by luck? No. When they gathered the smart people, engineers, PhD holders, and they are very, very rich organization. The terrorist organization are very rich organization. Do you, don't you think they have engineers from our companies? I bet they have. Do you think they have some people from Fire Brigade? Yes, they have. They have from MOI? Yes, they have. 
They have from the top government level, yes they have. From the lowest, yes they have. Because they are filthy rich. Very, very smart people. Terrorist organization or other groups can attack people, can attack entities, can attack governments. Testing the system. Sometimes they call for a threat. Why? They want to make sure how good you are. How is your emergency response center is good or not? Is your plan, your contingency plan, is it good enough or not? Because if you are weak, they're going to attack you the next day. If you are very strong, they will put a lot of insiders in your company to have the weak points. And the worst thing, which is no one can predict or can see, the disappointed staff who have been badly treated. This is a crash over the aircraft because of one staff who was badly treated. Let me tell you the story. One of the airports, one guy who used to work in security department and operation uh, center in the CCTV room itself. And he knows where is the exit, where is the entrance, and he, he's the one who signs the permits. So everything is in his hand. One day they fired him. I don't know the reason why, but they fired him. One, HR, they didn't circulate that so-and-so was dismissed. His ID was with him. Okay, if the ID is with him and HR, they didn't circulate, he can come and go anytime. The next day, they took his ID. But remember, our culture, Sabah Khair, Ahlan, Khamstash, Sinawana, Gullah, Sabah Khair. You will let me go. Sadly, you can forget that in Sinawana, I know the guy. I know his face. Oh, yes, yeah, how are you? Without searching my car, without searching my... He will want to ask my ID even. Where is it? Because HR didn't circulate. Okay. Like Ms. Jerry Naso said, people, which is we call them the sleepers, inside everywhere, each company, they notice that he's mentioning in his, in his Facebook bad things about, let's say, that, that, that airport, about the management of that airport. So they know there's something. So they approach him. What happened? Yeah, this thing happened. They fired me, and the, the, the manager put his cousin instead of mine in my position, and all of those things. So, imagine, and this is a true story. I saw it by my own eyes. The investigation, I saw it. He was going inside that airport and go, coming back five times with the bomb itself until they gave them the, yes, go ahead put it in that bag, which is in that airline. This thing happened. After six hours, when they gave him the green light, <coughs> put the bomb in that bag. And after one hour. Because of sabah al-khair, of our culture, of our behavior, this thing happened. As we said, we have sleepers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the deep sleepers. They are the quality control of that organization. They plan everything. And this is true. And these sleepers are, and deep sleepers are in the United Nations security program. Everywhere, every entity. They are sleepers and deep sleepers. How can we 
be a proactive. We have to challenge. How we can challenge them? Do we need a lot of barriers? I, I, I came into, I did some like a survey with Mr. Sultan to let your field here in Ikhul and Nishaiba. You're doing a great job. Safety, amazing. Security, beautiful. But what about the insiders? You have really nice checkpoint. It was really good. But what about the insider? You don't have the challenge for the insider. So, do we need a lot of security barriers to stop each and one, uh, one of you every 50 minutes? Every, every maybe two meters? Okay, maybe we need five to six barriers, six, five to six checkpoints. Or we can have, let's say, 2,000 barriers. We can have 2,000 barrier. How? Every employee in Ecot is a security barrier. We have to give them training. Background search. The background search, which as I know that, every year when you issue a security pass or the permit to enter a sterilized area, you do a back search. But what about, the, but what about the security department? Did you ever went to the parking and checked the cars, not by security threat if there's bomb or not? No, no. Let's say me, I'm a normal guy. My, my salary is 2,000. But I have a Lamborghini and I have a Bentley and I have Rolls Royce. What? There's a big question mark. And I'm from a normal family, I'm not from the rich families. From where? Not really from where. There's a big question mark. Or suddenly a guy who is from really rich family and he has a lot of cars, really expensive watches, he becomes a really down to earth guy. Suddenly. Question mark. Security department is not only open and close barrier. It's not only don't smoke here or don't park here or why did you speed up. Security department should have a lot of signs, a question signs, should be putting on top of the head of the employees. <coughs> Every one is responsible for protecting the assets and preventing attacks. You're doing an amazing job from the outsider attack. The insider attack, you need a lot of job. Remember, when I say security is everyone's business, let's say uh, this year, 2019, Frankfurt, JFK, Lufth uh, and, and uh, I think it was Bulabi, yes, Bulabi and Saudi Arabia. Because each one of them, yeah, the Saudi Arabia. Who said that there's a, a bag unattended? One patrolling guy, a porter. Because he was well trained, he reported that there's a bag is not attended, and I think it was uh, hidden behind one of the seats on gate number, so and so. When they checked it, it was a bomb. It was a seaport. How did it enter there? Inside. One of the employees. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Very, very good information and I echo your message. Usually we intend to focus on safety culture, but equivalent same is to focus on security culture as well. So thank you very much. And now, last but not least, we have a presentation. It's called Your Expert is in Your Pocket. Really interesting phone applications that a new approach and how to get a consultations from an expert. So Mr. Mohammed Baqar is the general manager and the founder of this applications.
انا كنت مبدع ومسوي سيستم كامل وانا مجتهد فيه. فهذه المشكله لما احنا ما نحصل على الاستشاره الصح خاصه في قطاع العمل. يعني خلينا نقول احنا كشركه او وزاره او اجل. كل واحد فينا محتاج، كانت وي... كان ويانا ناس يعانون من مشاكل اجتماعيه، مشاكل نفسيه، كان ناس محتاجين كوتشنج، في ناس كانوا محتاجين منتورنج داخل ال... 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 الشركه او داخل الوظيفه بشكل عام كانت الوزاره. فهذا اعطتنا خلينا نقول اعطتني الهيستوري اللي وصلت اني انا اسوي سيستم متكامل اللي هو ابلكيشن او هذا فريق العمل مالنا. ال ال باختصار الفيجن ميشن اوبجيكتيفز الجولز هي كلها اللي هي الجمله اللي حطيناها بالاول بالاول اللي هي يور اكسبرت از اكسبرت از ان يور بوكيتس اني تايم اني وير اليوم في سيستم احنا عارضينه بالطريقه هذه ان انت تخيل انك انت بالدوام وقت العمل وتحتاج الى استشاره مباشره او استشاره من خبير من خبراء الشركه نفسها او الوزاره او الجهه نفسها اللي انت متوظف فيها. اليوم احنا السيستم مالنا شنو تطلب مقابله الاتش ار ولا تطلب مقابله او انه يجون يسوون تريننج بين مده ومده يعطونا ورك شوبس يعطونا دورات تدريبيه وات ايفر زي انا بغيت الكونسلتيشن في شغله معينه مباشره ما راح اقدر احصلها. بس عن طريق السيستم معانا جدا بسيط وسهل اللي هو اني انا اقدر ادش اوكي انترنال يوز اقدر استخدم الابلكيشن ادش على الابلكيشن بالطريقه هذه راح الاقي مثلا بسبب المثال انا حطيت مثال قلنا احنا في ايكوت حطيت المثال على شركه ايكوت مجرد اني انا اضغط على البتن يدخلني على سيستم موظفين ايكوت فقط لا غير والاكسبرت ملوت ايكوت ما راح اشوف الموظفين راح اشوف الاكسبرت والخبراء مجرد اني اروح اختار الخبير اللي انا ابيه السيستم جدا بسيط بالنسبه حق الخبير Registration set your availability and create your session. That's it. Will use the registration. Find your expert. Book the session. واحد دش السيشن بالطريقة هذه. أوبا. إيش ما شاء الله صلاة. راح يشتغل كانه فيديو كول كانه فيديو كول بينك وبين الاكسبرت نفسه اللي انت حاجز عنده السيشن لا وفي معلومه ممكن هذا الريكوردنج بناء على طلب الشركه اللي تتعامل معنا او اللي تكون متعامله معنا او اللي تسجل يكون عندها اكونت معنا تقدر تخلي فيديوهات ريكورد مسجله هذا يوم قدمناها حق وزاره الصحه قلنا لهم نفس الفكره تقدرون تسوون فيها استشارات دوائيه كم واحد عندنا من المستشفى من ناحيه السيفتي وما سيفتي ايش كذا وعندنا ناس عندها مشكله في ما يعرفوا يتعاملون مع الادويه. كم كم واحد محتاج انه ياخذ استشاره من صيدلان او دكتور صيدلي يقول له شلون يتعامل او شلون يستخدم الدواء هذا عشان يستخدمه مع عياله ولا مع بيته. فايش كثر الصعوبه اللي انا على ما اوصل حق الشخص الصح الكواليفايد. يعني ترى ممكن انك على الصيدلي يسال صح؟ القى يسال. قاعد الصيدلية اسالها شلون استخدم الدواء الفلاني؟ اذا هذا كواليفايد قاعد يرد علي؟ هذا مو كواليفايد. سوري انا راح اشرب ماي لاقيك ان شاء الله. هذا مو كواليفايد، زين انا ايش دراني شنو جوابه؟ بس اذا انا عندي سيستم تبع الوزاره. يعني الناس الاكسبرت اللي موجودين داخل منهم تبع الوزاره. يعني كواليفايد 100% اذا جاوب لو ريكورد فيديو. تخيل انت بالشركه. ودشيت انت المصنع ولقيت في مشكله كركيبه طايحه بزاويه بالمصنع وما تدري هذه شنو السيفتي فيها اخليها ما اخليها اشيلها شلون اتصرف معاها على ما اوصل حق الشخص المعني شو راح يصير؟ راح ممكن تسبب الى دامج تصير مصيبه بس اذا انا كان عندي السيستم هذا واقدر اتواصل مع الاكسبرت مباشره احجز عنده ابوينتمنت وادش عليه على طول اس او اس ادش عليه على طول اقول له صور له فيديو اقول له شوف لا وريكم عشان تتوثق عندي ان انا ترى سجلت واعطاني النصيحه الفلانيه قال لي روح واحد اثنين ثلاثه اربعه لازم تتصرف هذا طبعا بالنسبه حق الانترنال يوز هذا غير طبعا الاكسترنال يوز اللي هو انت ممكن تستخدمه عندنا الابلكيشن هو ما هو بالكويت بس هو على يعني مو تبع ريجن معين ويانا يعني ناس من برا من امريكا من بلغاريا من بريطانيا خبراء مستشارين عدد جدا كبير وبوتنشل جدا عالي حجم السوق اليوم اثنين 
الخليج بس 2 مليار دولار حجم السوق مال الاستشارات ليش؟ العالم كله متوجه اونلاين الناس كلها رايحه اونلاين تدري شنو البوتنشل احنا انطلقنا ترى احنا شا... احنا مشروع تبع المشاريع الصغيره اللي في صندوق الوطني انطلقنا في شهر خمسه من شهر خمسه لشهر 10 او 11 وصلنا الى اكثر من 350 خبير على مستوى العالم واكثر من 4000 يوزر بوتنشل عالي الناس كلها رايحه اونلاين العالم كلها اوكي ناصر احنا ندري ان الاونلاين يخرع بس هذا الواقع اليوم منو فينا عنده المجال انه يطلع عشان يروح حق كونسلتيشن استشاره اجتماعيه نفسيه وصلنا الى اكثر من 65 قسم في جميع التخصصات وببليك حق الكل هذا الاكسترنال كل واحد يقدر يدش ان كان كشركه او كمستخدم اليوم انا محتاج استشاره اسريه ما ابي اطلع من روحي كلتشر كويتي فشل يشوفوني دارس دكتور نفسي بس اقدر ادش انا عن طريق الابلكيشن الاقي الكابل والكواليفاي مو اي ناس طبعا حجم سوق التعامل هذا مجموعه من الشركات اللي متعاونين او متعاونين معنا من ضمنهم بنك الخليج والصندوق الوطني وغيره وطبعا كثير من البنفيتس حق الشركات اللي تتعامل معنا وباختصار هذا اسف على الاطاله و ام ريلي سوري فور برزنتينج ان عربيك بس بيكوز ذا برزنتيشن واز ان انجلش سو اي تراي تو كاتش ذا بوث لانجويجز وشكرا والله يعطيكم العافيه Thank you for providing for the presentation. Really interesting approach to get consultations. Uh, really good. Thank you very much. And now we're going to have the closing remark by EHNS Director, Global Director, Mr. Mohamed Shimari. في البداية أحب أشكر الضيوف الكرام من كل قطاعات الدولة وزارة الداخلية مثلا بالهيئة العامة لأمن المنشآت الإدارة العامة للإطفاء مشكورين على جيتكم وزارة الداخلية بكافة قطاعاتها الجانب الأكاديمي أيضا موجود في هذه السيشن سواء كان من كسر مؤسسة كويت الأبحاث العلمية مشكورين على جيتكم الاخوان من مجلس الوزراء وايضا من الشركات الزميله في القطاع النفطي سواء كانوا زملائنا في البي اي سي او الكي بي سي افليت مشكورين على الجيه وصراحه وي ابريشيت فيري ماتش وجودكم معنا فور ذا لاست 3 اورز ثلاث ساعات هذه ادري وقتكم قيم وعندكم اشغال كثيره لكن وجودكم هني في هالسيشن هذا صراحه يعني لنا الكثير طبعا من شركات الزميله كبك ايضا حياكم الله وموفقين ان شاء الله دائما في الستارت اب واذا في اي مساعده منا احنا احنا حاضرين ومشكورين ايضا على جيتكم في هذا السيشن. اعتقد السيشن في البدايه كان موضح جدا allow me to speak in Arabic first my dear I know you are from Italy okay but I'll speak Italian for you later on. Uh, we'll speak in Arabic uh, first, as I'm finally going to do in the uh, session. For the beginning, I'd like to thank also the speakers, the gentlemen. Very big applause to the speakers that they joined us today. <laughs> we enjoyed. Uh, we enjoyed very much. We are seeing على هم نعطي بعد شيء اعتذار اعتذار حق الناس اللي ما قدروا يقعدون. صراحة هو أميز إن إن الحضور كان كبير جدا. فبعضهم كانوا واقفين طول الوقت مشكورين في بعضهم ما حصل مكان بالصفوف الاماميه وين دكتور فاضل عزيز؟ زعل وراح لا كان موجود دكتور فاضل عزيز ايضا من جامعه الكويت فحياك حياك دكتور فللاسف يعني وي تراي تو بلان ات فيري ويل بشكل بسيط ولكن بعد مرات يكون الاكسبكتيشن اكثر فنكرر نكرر اعتذارنا حق الناس اللي ما حصلوا مكان آه السيشن من البدايه كان صراحه فيري ويل استابلش والاوبجيكتيفز او المغزى او الاهداف المرجوه من هذا السيشن ذكرها اخوي سلطان في البدايه وجماعه ايضا الافكار قاعد تراودني يمين ويسار جماعه خلينا نشكر سلطان على هالسيشن هذا 
كونفرنس ميني حتى لدرجه اخوي الدكتور فرح الرشيدي قال هل في ريجستريشن؟ انا بغيت ازيدها واقول له بعد في فيز بعد تعطينا 50 دينار ونتوزعها بس فعلا فعلا يعني هالسيشن هذا هالسبيكرز هالبرزنتيشن يو ويل باي ماني تو تو جيت ذيز سبيكرز فروم ان كويت او اوت سايد كويت وهذا يعتبر ميني ميني كونفرنس الهدف منه مثل ما قلت في البدايه توضح فيري كلير من اخونا سلطان الهدف منه انه والله نهيئ بلاتفورم نتوركينج مع الناس اللي موجودين نتعرف عليهم زياده يعني يمكن خلال ربع ساعه تكلمت مع اخوي الدكتور الموسوي وايضا الدكتور فرح الرشيدي ذير از يعني بيج بوتنشل فور فور يعني انهانسينج السيفتي الكلتشر وانهانسينج ال ال سيفتي كلتشر في الكويت غير الكويت وصدقوني الاشياء هذه تعتبر كونتيجس يعني فيها شيء من من العدوى الايجابيه ان تنتقل من شركتنا شركه الكويت الى شركات الزميله الى كبك كبدايه فالحمد لله الاهداف المرجوه انا برايي الشخصي انها تحققت اليوم والفضل كله يعود صراحه لكم انتم كبرزنتر للحضور الكرام ف يعني ما اقدر اقول غير جزاكم الله خير اند ثانك يو سو ماتش فور بينج هير وقعدت وياهم طول هالفتره هذه وان شاء الله ان شاء الله نتامل منه ان هالانفورميشن اللي حصلناها اليوم ترجع مره ثانيه الى الى يور كوليجز ويور فاميليز بالجزء الاهم العائله لا تحس لا تظنون انه والله الاشياء هذه سيفتي بس داخل الشركات او بس داخل بيئه العمل يا جماعة ترى العائلة مهمة جدا. العائلة مهمة جدا، سايبر سكيورتي وي اولويز ثينك ابوت ات انه والله هو داخل الشركة، لا يجيني فايروس او شيء، بس لا تنسون انه في اشياء كثيرة قاعدة تحصل خاصة مع الاطفال وهم قاعد يتعاملون مع الكمبيوتر، فشيء مهم، كل شيء تتعلمه هني اولى ناس بهالاشياء هذه العائلة اللي قاعد توفر لنا الدعم لان نستمر عنها هني. فمرة ثانية أنا عاجز صراحة عن الشكر لكم جميعا وجزاكم الله ألف خير والحين أعتقد نروح حق التكريم أوكي يعطيك العافية حتى الله أبو محمد ما عليك أنا وياك على الستيج إن شاء الله We're gonna award or appreciate the speaker So we'll start with دكتور محمد الريحاني Nasıl olsa? Sağ olasın Rasa. Thank you. 
ان شاء الله ما عندنا محمد باكر